Welcome, everybody, to the Brain Ladle Trivia Podcast. I am your host, Davo. Today, we have with us not only a special guest, but that special guest is allowing us to record in his special house. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, how you doing? I'm good. Thanks for coming out today. It's been really nice. I mean, this is a this uh, satellite recording studio we've set up in here. It looks professional. Looks uh, amazing. Really does. I I, I really like it. And uh, the soundproofing off, rugs really pull the room together. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. Um, we also have the triumphant return of Kells. I am very happy to be here. We are very happy to have you. <laughs> How have you been? Oh man, I'm doing all right, man. I'm doing yeah. all right. Doing we good. tried our best to hold down the fort without you, but it was difficult. Well, I'm sure you pulled it off, you know, valiantly. Well, we had we had a little help. We had a guest. We had Emily with us. Oh, did she and, smoke you? Uh no, she didn't. But uh <laughs> and we had uh we had an interesting couple of weeks, let's just say that. Okay. And uh and Neil. Hello. So this you, week, you sound so disappointed. I mean, <laughs> I don't get any kind of chatter or anything. Look, just, you're the, you're oh, and Neil's here too. You, you are our steadfast, you know, bedrock member of the team. Huh. But he's treating you like Meg Griffin. But that's <laughs> <laughs> was that a fat joke? No, no, no. Meg, Meg is fine. No, I meant the bedrock part. <laughs> no, no. Oh. That was actually a compliment. You're like the uh, offensive tackle of our group. <laughs> Unsung hero. Whereas I am the charismatic pretty boy quarterback. Uh, Kells is the rugged, old-fashioned running back. And uh, Andy's a punter. So <laughs> Thanks. You're right, guy. Thanks for that. Yeah, but a Hall of Fame punter. Yeah, Hall of Okay. Fame. All right. Hall of Famer. Those were football that? references, right? Uh, yes, they were. Pretty much all of them. Yeah. I'm Andy. getting better at my sports. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, this week, I think Neil has something special for us. Well, I was thinking since this is our 13th episode that I would pick as the theme today, the number 13. Ooh, Triskadeka something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Just, wow. Triskadeka phobia? I yeah, think. if you're, yeah. Yeah, Triskadeka, that's, a, that's a fear of the number 13. I didn't get into any of the superstitions. I'm not a very superstitious person, so I stayed away from... From that whole uh, that whole thing. Well, that's ten points I lost. Yeah, it is. Was, you, and you might have given here. it away if you you know when you blab like that when you have an idea. It's so, possible. It's but possible. luckily Sorry. in this case. <laughs> so I was telling a friend of mine that I was doing an episode about thirteen, and he did a little little looking around for me. So there's an interesting number category called emerps, which are uh, numbers that are prime both forwards and backwards, and thirteen is the smallest emerp. That's a so, math thing, right? Yeah. Mm. You know what a prime number is, Dave? I do. Well, 13 it's, is a prime number. You get free shipping on them from Amazon. <laughs> I was told there'd be no math. But, well, maybe this is more of a wordplay one. You may appreciate this one more. Oh. The phrase 11 plus 2 is an anagram of 12 plus 1. Hey. That's so actually, wow. think about that. That is neat. That is... You you just saw my mind blow. I know. Yeah. Yeah. We need to wow. get a clean up. Yeah, on yeah, yeah. Floor over there. <laughs> you gotta sweep this up. Anyway, so today's theme is thirteen. We've got six categories of four questions each, plus a plus a special final question where you can bet all of your points or none or anywhere in between. Category one is movies. How many movies are there in the Friday the Thirteenth series, including reboots? There's no within. Nope. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. wow. That's harsh. Uh, okay. Don't forget about the uh, Freddy versus uh, Mecha Shark. That was. Well, you one. could forget about that one because Freddy wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Freddy and Friday the 13th don't really oh, really right. together. Yeah, that's right. You're going to do well on this one. Yeah, I, I, yeah, you, so, like, if you were thinking about okay. Jason and the Argonauts, you might right. be closer. Yeah. <laughs> Knock him still, on the door. still not quite right. Jason Bourne, maybe like it's, if you're stretching it. All right, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Um, give me a second. I'm locked in. Andy, I'm going with lucky number seven. See okay. what I did there? 
Kels? Oh, a nine. Devo? Twelve. Okay. Well, so if you were a fan of the series, you would know that Jason X was the 10th Jason movie in space. I thought they were just trying to be radical. (laughs) Jason in space! Plus... Yeah, it was really bad. That was terrible. Plus, there was Friday... Or uh, Jason... uh, Freddy vs. Jason. That was the name of it. Plus, there was the Friday the 13th reboot, making a total of 12 movies. Wow. You just knew that? I did. Oh, well. I actually did. Wow. Either That's way, one of those questions way. I'm okay with getting wrong. I, it's, a har, it's a harbinger of my doom. I feel like if I don't get the first one, <laughs> it's all downhill from here. <laughs> this may be your unlucky unlucky day. And I'm a big fan of the number. Well, I've still got quite a few 13 questions left. Question two in movies. This 2001 Tony Shalhoub haunted house story was a remake of a 1960 movie of the same name. I'm locked in. Me too. Locked in. Andy? 13 Ghosts. Devo? 13 Ghosts. Kells. 13 Ghosts. That is the correct answer. That one was too easy. I was hoping Tony Shalhoub would throw you off. Yeah, cause... I don't remember him being in that movie. <laughs> he was only the main character, I think. Yeah. I remember Matthew Lillard was in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 He got broken in half, I feel like. Yeah, the wrong kind of way, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was rough. <laughs> Question three in movies. This popular movie series, which began in 1979, now has 13 movies, although another two are planned. It includes a reboot known as the Kelvin Timeline. Known as the what timeline? Kelvin. What? That sounds familiar somehow. You didn't tell me you had a timeline. Um, I'm just finding out, too. (laughs) I'm shocked that you didn't know that, Kels. (laughs) Really? Shocked. And a poem. Um, said 1979. That was the first one. And there's been 13. 13 cents. Well, th- there are 13. There's total. 13 total. <sighs> and another two are planned already. Mm, I don't feel good about this, but I... Mm, it counts as our avatar. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm locked in, but I'm really unhappy with my answer. I'm going to lock in with this. I'm kind of, I'm very curious to see what the, uh, what the answer is. But I have, a, I have a guess here. I, I, I'm, I'm locking in with something. Well, tell us what you're locked in with. <laughs> the land before time. Okay. Devo. I went with Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, I went with Rocky. <laughs> It was the only thing, the only movie I could come up with in that period. Seventy seven. Ah, well, seventy six. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking seventy six, but I. It won the Oscar two. in seventy six, didn't it? I thought it won it at the seventy seven <clears throat> ceremony, oh, okay. but it would have been for seventy six. So. Right. Yeah, it's seventy six. Doesn't matter. It's not Rocky. Yeah, no, no, yeah. no it is not. <laughs> Thank you for all confirming it's not Rocky. <laughs> I was... And I didn't think that Nightmare on Elm Street started there early. I thought. It was I thought. It, I thought it did, but. You know, I mean, fine. Pick us all the answers apart when Neil actually has it. It's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you, you guys want to work it out amongst. Oh, yourselves. we have a, we have an answer. We, we'd rather hear from you, Neil. Uh, well, no points on this question for anybody, and I, I'm a little disappointed in you. The correct answer is Star Trek. Oh my gosh! Oh wow! I don't feel uh, as guilty about that one. Really, I do. Because I know you guys are all like sci-fi fans, right? Wow. I feel I feel terrible because of Next Generation. I never think of those all as Star Trek movies. The you know? Kelvin I, thing really threw me off. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what the, I don't know. Yeah, what that's that, the, USS I, it's the USS Kelvin. It's the USS Kelvin. Oh. Kelvin. That um uh, that caused the split in the timeline. That makes sense. So, wow. Oh man, that is going <laughs> to bother me. We all have brain. to turn in our nerd ID on the way out the door. Yes. <laughs> This is, it's just this more is, a nerd demerit. Actually. You know what? 13 is an unlucky number. <laughs> sure is. Neil, what are you doing to us? Well, well, let's get one more movie question and then we'll move on to more interesting things, maybe. This Michael Crichton adaptation was based loosely on Beowulf and was a huge box office bomb. I'm locked in. All right. I have my answer. 
because no other ones are coming. I'm locked in with the wrong thing because I, I just I'm locked know. in with the correct answer. So everybody's locked Congratulations. in. Congratulations. <laughs> it might have helped you guys to recall the theme of the the show, but what do you have, Andy? Um, I I uh, if I can't come up with a film answer, it's almost always Sharknado. Okay. So I'm going with Sharknado. Kel? And you know me, when I get them wrong, I like to go for laughs. So I went with 13 going on 30. <laughs> I almost used that movie. <laughs> Devo? 13th Warrior. The correct answer is the 13th Warrior. Oh, I've yeah. never seen that. Never seen it either. I've also never seen I 13 going come on up 30. With a, I know. will say that 13th Warrior happens to be one of my favorite bad movies. In oh, yeah. that you know it's a bad movie, but it is just so fun. You still enjoy it. It's an enjoyable romp. That's okay. Cool. That's cool. So I guess, Davo, that means you helped lose. You helped it only lose one hundred and twenty nine million dollars. I did. I contributed to <laughs> only losing one hundred and twenty. I didn't know it was that big a flop. It was a pretty big flop. Holy crap! One of the one of the biggest flops ever, actually. Well, I liked it, so darn it. <laughs> so it's not your fault. No, I didn't. I bought the DVD. Well, I was just going to say, it does explain on the DVD case where they have those quotes. And one of the quotes was, Dave liked it. Um, <laughs> yeah. So now I understand the rest of it. Hey, Dave, what are our scores after the first round? Uh, Kelvin has, Kels has 10, uh, Andy has 10, and Davo has 30. Category two is in music. Bring it on. Oh, it's going to get brought in. Bring it on. <laughs> brought in. Brought in. Mm. At the age of 13, this singer appeared on Star Search and signed with L.A. Reid's LaFace label soon after. He went on to win eight Grammys, 18 Billboard Music Awards, nine Soul Train Awards, and eight AMAs. He was also on Moesha. Locked in. It hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> 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 Was it the Moesha that got it for you? No. Nah. You knew it? As soon as you, as soon as you said L.A. Reid. Uh. At the age of 13. I don't know a, if he signed with LaFace he, at 13, but he was on Star Search at 13. Hmm. And apparently was quite a stud at 13. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> Am I am I saying LaFace right? Yeah. Is that, is that yeah? I wasn't sure if it was LaFace or LaFace. LaFace. Yeah. I guess that's a play on L.A. L.A. Reed and Babyface. Uh Their their label together. I'm glad I didn't lock in with Babyface. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I did lock in before he said that, but I was thinking Babyface. What a fit. Oh, oh, fit. oh, 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 oh. Oh, I know it now and I can't come up with a name. It's probably Lionel Richie. No. <laughs> <laughs> Lionel Richie was never on Star Search. Neil Sedaka. He was a star before Star Search. Um, you can't put anything past Andy. <laughs> uh, I, uh, it's right there. I'm I'm locked in with no answer. Because I'm not going to, I know who it is and I'm not going to guess the wrong one. I, uh, so, did you punt? I got nothing. I'm just going with nothing. <laughs> oh, I'm man. Blanking here. Okay, we have a punt from Andy. <laughs> what do we have from Davo? I went with Bobby Brown. All right. I went, with, I went with Usher. It's correct, Usher. Correct answer is Usher. Oh, yeah. wow. I could see his face and I couldn't come up with the name. You would have been closer with Lionel Richie, Andy. No. A closer than no answer? <laughs> That's <just> embarrassing. <laughs> no, no. Well, I'll let you want to be caught dead on Moesha. Come on. <laughs> Come on. I think it might be fair to say Moesha wouldn't have had Lionel Richie on. Would have been an honor for Moesha to have Lionel Richie on. Do not speak ill, Lionel Richie. Wow. Wow, that is... I didn't know you had such strong feelings about Lionel Richie. <laughs> I really like Lionel Richie. I feel like we should move on. <laughs> I, I can say that this recording session is not easy like Sunday morning. I'll say that. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Question two in music. I've got an easy mode and a hard mode. I think I'll leave off 
the easy mode part <laughs> because I have a feeling at least one of you is going to lock in pretty quickly. But if you don't, I'll, I'll, I'll throw you a bone. Question two. What singer caused controversy by marrying his 13-year-old cousin when he was 22? And it was his third marriage. Locked in. That's Locked what I in. thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, I'm, I'm locked in with an answer. What answer? I just swung for the fences and said Jerry Lee Lewis. Okay. Devo? Jerry Lee Lewis. Andy? Jerry Lee Lewis. Correct answer is Jerry Lee Lewis. You guys know who his two famous cousins were? I have no idea. No. He had a band with both of these guys earlier in his career. One was Mickey Gilly of mm-hmm. Country yeah. Music's you know, famous bar down in Houston he had for a long time. Yeah. His other cousin, someone you may have heard of, named Jimmy Swaggart. Are you kidding me? Yep. Really? Yeah, I guess I've heard about Jimmy Swagger. I'd forgotten about that, but I didn't know about, about the other. Wow. Well done. I have said the kids to you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Question three in music. Glenn Danzig, best known for his horror punk band Misfits and his eponymous metal band, wrote a song called 13 for what country music icon's 1994 album American Recordings? Locked in. Locked in. Locked in. <laughs> Not locked in. David, what was that? <laughs> wow. That was a momentary system crash. You all right over there? I am now. Yeah, you got I'm, I'm locked in. I'm sorry. You got to turn it off and turn it back yeah, on. I had to restart my brain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to say Willie Nelson, but then I went with Johnny Cash. Kels? I also went with Johnny Cash. Andy? Johnny Cash. Correct answer is Johnny Cash. I had gotten it down to Willie Nels <laughs> before I got to restart. <laughs> I was two layers away from Kentucky. I'm like, there, but there. <laughs> <laughs> two letters from catastrophe. <laughs> so that was, that was uh, Johnny Cash's 81st album. 81st. He ended up. He ended up with 96 total. I actually have the the complete collection, and nobody needs to have the complete collection. <laughs> wow. You have all 96 um, of his albums. I do. I do. Holy crap. Yeah, and a, there's a lot of repetition. I mean, I'm a completist, so it's sure. you know, once you get close, you have to wrap it up. And there's also a lot of gospel albums. Sure. Sure, but, sure. You know, and you can be guaranteed like a Christmas album every couple of years. Like, yeah, there was. <laughs> Didn't he do a lot of compilations? Like a lot of compilations. Yeah, from... yeah, yeah. But he just, you know, he he was one of those guys that just kept recording though too. He was, you know, he was recording new stuff right up until the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there were a couple of posthumous albums. I yeah. Think. Oh yeah. Did you know that about uh, Glenn Danzig? I did. I have the album. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I didn't know if you read the liner notes. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you gotta read the liner notes. <laughs> A sucker for liner notes. <laughs> okay, you guys may hate me for this next question. I tried it out on my my significant other, and she just got a blank look on her face. It's kind of a math question, but it has to do. I'm going to basically give you some song names, and you got to tell me based on the bands the answer to the question. So oh. it's called band math. Oh, I'm failing. <laughs> Take the aviators who sing ride. Subtract a brick, then subtract some kryptonite to get 13. The the quoted words are ride, brick, and kryptonite. So those are names of songs. I'm locked in. Hello, and we're giving you what are we I want to know the names of the bands. Oh. All three bands or Yeah, there's three bands. All right, so I'm sorry. Give me, give me the question again. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I probably shouldn't have done this question. <laughs> give it to me again. So, I got this. Take the aviators who sing ride. Okay. Subtract a brick. Then subtract some kryptonite to get 13. So the, the bands have numbers in their names, and you're doing the math on the numbers in the band names. Oh, that that goes a lot oh, better than what I was working on. I have wrong answers. <laughs> well, nobody's locked in yet. And I, I could see confusion <laughs> still, so I'm trying to clarify have that. Numbers in their names. Is, and ride is the first song. Yeah, and it's the the 
take the aviators who sing ride. Mm-hmm. So and the name a- of the band that sings ride and it's associated with aviators. Then oh. subtract the number from the band that sings a song brick. Okay. Then subtract the number from the band who sings kryptonite. Okay. It would really well, help if I knew the first two songs. I got one. I've got one, but there's no number in that band. That's <laughs> probably you not don't the right have band. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I, I erased the second band. Um, I, I have another I am clue I can point out if if it would help. Oh, of course. I'm locked in. Oh, well, you then show off. Wow. Then there's no more clues. Sorry. Meet me in the parking lot after this. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> me, you, and the clock. We got words. <laughs> I'm glad I got backup from the clock. <laughs> she warned me not to use this question. <laughs> oh, this is an ugly question. <laughs> yeah, this is. But if this if is mean spirited, right, if I, it's mean spirited, <laughs> mean spirited. <laughs> <laughs> if my answer is right, which I think it is. I'll I'll even tell you how I'll I'll show you how I got it. That would be nice. Yeah, I'm baffled by this. I I I'm locked in. Coming up with a lot of TV shows. The eight is did eight of eight is enough? Like cut an album? I didn't know. No. <laughs> okay. All right. I was just making sure. <laughs> just making sure. Um. I want to get that for the collection. <laughs> Surprised you don't already have it. Well, they didn't make it, so I can't have it, can I? <laughs> I, I don't want to waste any more time. I'm I'm locked in with um a third of an answer. Okay. What what's your third? Uh, um, I got three doors down. Okay. That was one of the bands. Okay, and I am missing the other two. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Andy. I got hung up with Kryptonite was also recorded by the Stone Temple Pilots. I was trying to figure out how that worked. Um, <laughs> Did you get and Brick House by the Commodores? It's not Brick House. It's Brick House. <laughs> <laughs> it's mighty mighty. <laughs> so it all hang out. so what's the real answer? Yeah, tell us, Dave. What do you have? I had a ride was twenty one pilots. Right. And then I had ride, and I had uh, I had Brick. Not brick. Uh, I had kryptonite by three doors down. Right. And then I tried to think of how, what I did the math. So it needed to be a band with a five in it. So then I did wow. five for fighting. Oh, wow. Dave, you were so close. What? Ben folds five. Oh, God. Wow. Impressive, Ooh, I though. I forgot about Ben folds five. That's I forgot like their, about Ben folds five. That's probably their most popular song, wasn't it's it? Their, yeah, Riff? the abortion song. Oh, that's... Yeah, <laughs> this took a turn. <laughs> there it is. Well, it is. It's about an abortion. <laughs> what? Oh, which song? Brick. And now I hear it in my head, and I'm sad. Can I hear the question again? Because <laughs> I feel like I got lost. Because we were trying to get the thirteen, right? No, I. Well, sort of. You got oh, just adding. Take all the aviators who sing ride. Mm-hmm. Twenty one pilots. Right. Subtract a brick. Ben folds five. Twenty one minus five. Okay, I got you. I, then subtract some kryptonite to get 13. Because I, I didn't hear the, I missed the subtract somehow. I was like, 21. I'm like, is there a, a negative band out there somewhere that he's going to get to 13? Okay. Oh, I'm with you. I'm with you. Well, well that was I, close. I that was, was close. that was very nice. I, I feel better that nobody got it right. <laughs> <laughs> because it was mean. And I promise, I promise I won't. I that promise was, I won't do any that complicated was diabolical. That, that's, that's I that's, thought it was a, I thought it was an inventive, well written question. I was that's, trying to do something a little different. I no, that was I that couldn't was. find another thirteen in the music industry. <laughs> that's 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 well played. Does Dave O get any points? Nope. All right, then I'm happy. <laughs> no, I thought you were gonna get at least like two points for that. For he that. gets kudos for understanding the question. <laughs> you know, I'll just take kudos. I'm I'm good with a few kudos. You're a good man. Okay, I, after you, you could have gone with what band has only numbered their albums, including an album called Thirteen. What band was that? Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, Chicago never named an album; they only gave them numbers. Well, you're the only person here who would have gotten that. <laughs> he knew that. Right. He you're knew the that. one reading the question. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and Andy has all 13 albums. No, there's more than 13 there's albums. albums. <laughs> <laughs> uh, They're up to but I do have all the Chicago albums as well. Would you guys like to know the scores? Yes. No. Dying. <laughs> well, it tightened up significantly. Uh, Andy, you have 30. Uh, Kells has 40, and I have 50. It's not too bad. Yeah. yeah. All right. Still close match. We'll see if we can make a make a difference in this round because we're up to the history question, history category. <laughs> Only a couple of them are U.S. history. Oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> even better. Question one in history. Very recently, like a week or two ago, as we recorded, as we're recording today, uh, a Japanese cult leader was executed for killing 13 people and injuring thousands more in a chemical attack on the Tokyo subway in 1995. What chemical was used during that attack? It was all over the news in 95. Mm -hmm. I remember this. Yeah. Um, depending on the month, I was either 9 or 10. <laughs> Look, just because you're young. Really heavy into the news at that time. <laughs> you need to be informed. Okay, I'll go back and tell 9-year-old me to get, get with it. I'm yeah. pretty sure the Weekly Reader covered that. Really? <laughs> and CNN Student News. Yeah, the, uh, I didn't even know that was a thing. I'm pretty sure you made that last one up. No, CNN Student News. They I don't do think they did it in 95. No, they didn't do it in 95. <laughs> I've locked in an answer. I'm a little unhappy with it. I, yeah, we're, oh, yeah, we're going to go with it. Dang it. Bro. I'm locked in. Uh, all right, I'm locked in. Okay, Kels. I just went with anthrax. Okay. Sulfuric so acid? Davo? Mustard gas. It was sarin gas. Sarin is awful. It I was. knew it was. Uh, I thought it was a gas as well. I thought he just. Uh, what is it when he mixes bleach and uh, um, ammonia? What gas is that? Mustard gas. It is mustard gas. Yeah, that's what I thought. Of, but I couldn't come up with it. I just knew how to make it. <laughs> now everybody else does as well. <laughs> <clears throat> well, you don't, are a teacher, Andy. Don't worry, I'll cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> I almost went with mustard gas too, though, but I had no idea. Well, you I almost would have gotten it wrong. Yeah, yeah I would almost. But I, at least I wouldn't have been alone. I forgot he got a hold of sarin gas. Uh, Did I he make it? I don't know. I don't remember. So another thirteen connection there. Thirteen members of the cult were sentenced to death for that attack. And they killed 13 people. Tell him. Question two. This should be an easy one. What is the topic of the 13th Amendment of the United States of America? Um, so, Andy, Andy, so what is it that you do? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm locked in. I just want to. I'm locked in, too. Yeah. I'm locked in I'm as locked well. In. Okay. Andy? Um. It is the amendment after the Civil War that gave uh, African Americans the right to vote and be citizens. Okay. I, I went with the abolishment of slavery. Devo? I went with manumission. It is the abolishment of slavery. Right. The 14th is, that's why I was hesitating. Is the 13th, 14th, and 15th? They're three I'll in a row. Yeah, I'll deal with it. Ah. We got points for Kells and Devo. Maybe this one will be. Easier for you. This is okay. another U.S. history. I'm really embarrassed about that. One. <laughs> I'm sure none of your students will listen, right? I've told them to listen. Yeah. <laughs> well, how you guys doing there at Bentonville West? <laughs> <laughs> well, show them up with this one. Harry Truman once called the 13th U.S. president a, quote, weak, trivial thumb twaddler who would do nothing to offend anyone. Who was he talking about? If given a little time, I can come up with this for you. Basically, I'm looking for the 13th president of the United States. Yay. I'm locked in. Who Harry Truman was not very impressed with, apparently. Because he was a trivial thumb twaddler. Mm. <laughs> I can see his face. I've lost his name just now. Um, I think that happened to a lot of people. I'm locked in. No, I'm not. No. Why are you well, unlocking? I unlocked. I didn't write it down yet. Um, well, you can't actually lock in until you write it down. 
So that was a bit of a premature lock. It was a premature, premature lock to be sure. Um, Oh. Meanwhile, Mr. Lister is going through his list in his brain. He's only got to get that to 13. Correct. I don't know what's taking him so long. Just making sure I got the order correct. Ooh, I hope this is right. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Daveville? Yeah. Are you locked in? I am locked in. What's your answer? Millard Fillmore. Kels? Millard Fillmore. Andy Millard Fillmore. Correct answer is Millard Fillmore. Oh, I'm so glad I learned them in order like last year. It helps. I guess he had a reputation for being kind of a conciliator, trying to he was trying to keep the country together really and was given he was uh, responsible for the Missouri Compromise, I think. No. Or uh, the, well, the, the I mean the Missouri the, Compromise happened on his watch, yeah. but uh uh, there was another the, compromise. Was that, that was Henry Clay of Kentucky. The, the great compromiser. The great compromiser, to say. But yeah, mo- but it really, presidents 12 through 15 were all just desperately, not only trying to keep the, the country together, but also their party together was the other issue. Was the party was splintering at the same time. So there's a little nugget from our friend Andy. <laughs> Golf claps. <laughs> Golf claps. Question four in history. Kind of a geography history question in this one. Prior to 1991, Mexico was the world's 13th largest country by area. But the carving out of what former Soviet Republic as the ninth largest country moved Mexico down to 14th? I'm locked in. I'm wrong. Dang it. I'm locked in. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you did the same thing. Didn't you? Oh. I, I will bet you I will bet you a dollar that you did the exact no, process. My, my answer is even worse. I'm sure of it's even oh, worse. Oh, you're gonna have to work hard. Um, I'm locked in with an answer of some sort. Devo, I wanna know what you what you went through there. Well, I got real confident, and I felt good because I, I pictured the map in my head, and what I locked in with was Ukraine, because Ukraine is pretty big. Is but big. then I remembered, hey, there's a whole bunch of little stands out there, and some of the stands are fairly large. So my answer that I wrote down was the Ukraine, but I'm thinking it's Kazakhstan. So, I, But my answer is the Ukraine. Andy? I went with Poland for reasons that defy logic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one reason that springs to mind is that Poland wasn't was not one of part the, of. Yes, I understand Soviet that. Republic, yeah. yeah, I got communism mixed up with. Yeah, and I. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say that your answer was dumber than Dave's. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why I said. I mean, no the offense. Back. As soon as I as soon as I wrote down, like, wait a minute. I apparently owe you a dollar, or you should pay me a dollar. I should. I was at least you should pay us all a dollar for fun. <laughs> <laughs> This first podcast today is not going well. So just, I needed to be warmed up or something. Kells, what did you what did you go with? I just said Russia. The correct answer is Kazakhstan. So here's a trivia nugget. Ooh. One of the top thirteen countries used to be the Sudan, which is now split into two. So Mexico is back into the thirteenth spot. As of 2011. Because of South Sudan. Because of South Sudan, yeah. <laughs> well done, Mexico. Go, Mexico. Yeah, they, t- they were they were 14th for about 20 years, and then they, they clawed their way back up. <laughs> Climbing back up the charts. Mexico. <laughs> and as soon as they take back Texas, they may, uh, I don't know how far they're going to. Oh, climb. Texas and California and, yeah, New Mexico. Just, just the whole Southwest, yeah. basically. David, where are we at after round three? Uh, Andy has 40. Kells has 60. And Davo has 70. Category four. Sports jerseys. Jerseys. I got a chance. There's a bunch of bonus questions in here that I think you guys might enjoy. I knew you loved us, Neil. Question one. This NBA star was a 13-time NBA All-Star and was the first player to earn over $100,000 a year, if you can imagine. 
$100,000 a year. He had his number 13 jersey retired by one university and three NBA teams. Who was he? And for a bonus point each, name the university and the three pro teams that have all retired his jersey. I am locked in. I'm locked in as well. I am locked in. Andy? I'm going with Bugs Bunny from Space Jam. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you going to attempt the bonuses? Um, what's the matter, you? <laughs> <laughs> that was Rocky and Bullwinkle, I'm pretty that sure. That is Rocky and Bullwinkle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Acme University. Acme okay. University. <laughs> they were Big Ten school there for a while. <laughs> until yeah. uh, actually an anvil fell on a stadium. It was really oh tragic. Gosh. That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> we'll skip Kells while he composes and himself. Scooby Doo, you. <laughs> so yeah, I went with uh, Wilton Chamberlain. Okay, and the college would have been Kansas. Rock Chalk Jayhawk. I, uh, I, I, yeah, uh, the three professional teams would be the Warriors, the Sixers, and the Lakers. Okay, Davo, uh, Will Chamberlain. Rock Chalk Jayhawks, Kansas <laughs> University, uh, the uh, Go- Golden State, yeah, uh, Los Angeles Lakers, and the Philadelphia 76ers. 14 points to Davo and Kells. And <laughs> I think it was zero. That, that, was, that was a resounding zero, though, I think, for creativity and props to, you know, really the Oscar winning. Should have been an Oscar winner, to be sure. Space Jam. At least nominated. Yeah. That's, yeah. How, that's yeah. how I feel. It's, it's, you know, you know how Hollywood is. <laughs> Question two. What former quarterback wearing number 13 set records by having 13 consecutive playoff games with a touchdown pass and 13 seasons with more than 3,000 passing yards? Both records were later broken by Brett Favre. <laughs> <laughs> bonus for one point <laughs> I, I'm never quite sure how to pronounce it so I always just make it funny I would pay good money to hear you say that like all day <laughs> that was great. for a bonus of one point each name the university and pro team that have retired his number not Brett's Brett. <laughs> I'm locked in I believe I am locked in. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Andy? Joe Montana. And I was trying to decide between the Chiefs and the Niners. Niners for the retired jersey. And is he UCLA? Okay. I'm getting a lot of like (laughs) smirks. I'm just going to go out on a limb and I'm going to say it doesn't really matter. Okay. Where he went to school in this case. Wow. Kels. <laughs> uh sticking with the theme of the uh show, I went with Dan Marino. Oh he went to right. Pitt, I wanna say, and oh, well he got his number retired by the Dolphins. But I'm not so sure about the Pitt anymore. Is that what you wrote down on? Yes. Okay. This one stings. Dan Marino. Yep. University of Pittsburgh. Yep. Miami Dolphins. That is the correct answer. 12 for Kells and Davo. <laughs> Wrong quarterback for... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Andy Joe Montana. Which is, had that kind of success. Don't know why. <laughs> and did, Montana huh. didn't wear number 13, did he? He wore no. 16. Yeah. <laughs> Going on 7. <laughs> <laughs> this one really hurts. This has just been the worst one ever for me. Wow. Question three. Oh, good. <laughs> Can't wait. I, I, I have I, a lot I, of fun. I bet you guys are going to know the quarterback. I, I'd be really excited if you know the retired Jersey team. Mm. This undrafted quarterback played 13 postseason games and has one of the highest completion percentages. Name the one pro team who retired his number 13. I'm going to I'm locked in. Uh I have an answer. I'm locked in. All right, I'm I'm locked in. 
Kels? I went with Kurt Warner. Okay. And <laughs> <laughs> as as Davo oh. deflates over there. And the team would have been the Rams. Okay. Uh, Andy? I had nothing. I think you were okay. Which is worse than what you Dave had. Davo? Uh, <laughs> I need uh <laughs> I, I went with Earl Morrill and with the Colts. The correct answer is Kurt Warner. Ugh. And the only pro team that retired his jersey was the Iowa Barnstormers. <laughs> <laughs> the AFL. Uh, yeah. Nicely done. Ugh. Wow. <laughs> so I think that's just 10 for Kells on that yeah, one. Yeah, I'm, un- I'm very unhappy about that. <laughs> I honestly thought you had it. With I felt like I did, but I totally forgot about Kurt Warner. I'm pretty sure Kurt Warner came up in an earlier episode. Just kind of in passing, someone mentioned him. Question four. Talking about baseball. Uh-huh. Ooh. Oh, this is going to be rough. What player switched to number 13 when he was traded to the Yankees because the number he'd been using had already been retired? The bonus in this case is what number was his number previously and who had that number retired for the Yankees oh, or who boy. had the Yankees retired it for on whose behalf? Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Mm, uh, I am locked in. I am locked in as well. Not so sure about the bonus. I'm more sure about the bonus than the player. <laughs> Well, you can't get the bonus without the full. Without Come the, on. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm locked in. Andy? I think Yogi Berra wore 13, didn't he? And I have no idea who the player to change, so I'm going to go with A-Rod just because. I think I think you misunderstood part of the question. But yeah. Kels, yeah. go ahead. Oh. I went with Alex Rodriguez. Okay. And I believe before he got to the Yankees, he wore number seven, which was the number of Mickey Mantle. Okay. Devo? Well, I'm totally wrong. I forgot about A Rod. But what I put down was Gary Sheffield, who wore number three, which would have been which would have been Babe Ruth. Yes. Oh, can so I we, can I guess the player? Well, I'll know the player if it's not number seven. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Nick. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> we kind of have a mix of of uh, I think it was correct questions. Okay. A Rod wore number three. Three. Oh. Until he moved to the Yankees, right. he couldn't keep three because they retired it for Babe Ruth George, many years okay. earlier. So he switched to 13. I got mixed up. Okay. I got the A-Rod part right anyway. Did you say A-Rod? I said A-Rod. You said A-Rod. A-Rod, 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 A-Rod was just blogging. So I got nothing. <laughs> you got, no, you got the bonus points. Okay, cool. So two bonus points there, right? I mean, in a kind of roundabout half-ass way, you got it. But <laughs> you got them, so I'll give them to you. <laughs> it wasn't half-assed. It was, you know. The logic was there. Logical deduction. So what do we have after uh, round four? I'm doing my gazentas. Hold on. Well, Kelvin did very, very well. I can tell you that right now. In fact, Kelvin did so well, he is in the lead with 106. Whoa. Uh, Devo, not far behind with 98. And uh, Andy is still in the room with 50. <laughs> nice. With how many points? 50. <laughs> okay. I got this. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't be a podcast if Kelvin didn't laugh at you. <laughs> he laughs at himself sometimes. I know. Oh, I yeah. know. That's when it really hurts. <laughs> this, this, this one stings. Category five, television. Oh. <laughs> this one's subtitled 13th episode of the 13th season. Oh, oh long so- running. I'm going to I'm going to read you a brief description of an episode a brief description of the 13th episode of the 13th season of four different shows and you tell me what sh- what show it was. I like this already. I'm intrigued. Question 1. A sheriff enjoys his newfound glory when he puts Festus in jail on a trumped up murder charge. What show does that describe? I'm locked in. Locked in. Also locked in. There you go. Gunsmoke. 
Andy? Oh. Munsters. <laughs> Kel? Uh, well, this would have been a little dark for the show that I picked now that I think about it, but um, I went with the Andy Griffith show. <laughs> <laughs> the fence just threw me off. <laughs> it sounds like a Mayberry name. No, it was a Gunsmoke name. Uh, he was kind of the, the mountain man, hillbilly guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, he <bit> me. <laughs> no, he was bleed by Walter Brennan. <laughs> but he could have been. Wow. <laughs> okay, question two. April steps in as interim head of general surgery, but the attendings give her the cold shoulder, especially Maggie, who believes April deserted Weber and is now on Bailey's side. I tried to make that sound exciting, but... I was thrilled. I want to know more. Well, you get season 13 on DVD oh, and you can... I'm, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I'm... <laughs> no pressure, Dave. No, it's okay. <laughs> oh, uh, none. I cause... don't... Uh, my brain just vapor locked. <laughs> I'm going to say Because my brain... Laid... I'm locked in with a vapor lock. <laughs> Uh, vapor lock is not the correct answer. <laughs> no, I have an answer. Oh, uh, what, what is your answer? <laughs> ER. Okay. Kels? I want with Grey's Anatomy. See, I vapor locked on that <laughs> word. <laughs> Andy? General Hospital. I understand there's a hospital <laughs> involved in that program. There is, I think. Uh, I in this know. case, though, the correct hospital is, what is it? Grey it's, West, um, Regional West or something like that? It's... Uh, I almost said Mercy. That's not it. Well, it was renamed. Yeah. Mercy is what I'm saying over here. <laughs> Mercy, Mercy was Scrubs. The correct answer, by the way, is Grey's Anatomy. Seattle Grace. I want to Seattle say. Grace, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Question three. Ben begins the process to adopt Jamie as his son, but the process is complicated when Jamie's maternal grandfather, Paris Callahan, played by Will Gear, comes forward waiting, wanting custody. I feel like you just made up the show. What is it? Can you can, can I get that again? Ben begins the process to adopt Jamie as his son, but the process is complicated when Jamie's maternal grandfather, Paris Callahan, played by Will Gear, comes forward wanting custody. Got it. I'm locked in. If you know who Will Gear is, that's helps you place it in time a little bit. I think. I do that. Davo, do you know who Will Geary is? I do not. Okay. Well, it's nice to know you're suffering with somebody. I, I sure am. I'm locked in. There's a very, very small number of shows that made made it through 13 seasons. And even fewer that I could find a recap of episode 13 <laughs> of season 13. I, I want to use Gunsmoke again. Just, maybe he slipped and used it twice just mm -hmm. to throw us off. There was a Ben and Grizzly Adams. I'm just going to give you that hint now. <laughs> <laughs> the bear was Ben. <laughs> Not sure. It's been a long time. I don't think Grizzly Adams made it past season two or three. <laughs> I want to know the logistics of a bear adopting a person. I, I know. It's interesting. Well, it was I would watch that episode. Me it was the Wild I would, West. I would watch that episode. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm locked in. It's just a wild guess, though. Are you locked in, Dave? Yes. Kells, what do you have? I just wrote down Bonanza. Okay. Dave? I'm with Guiding Light. <laughs> Jeez. The soap even, operas last I forever. About, I didn't even think about soap operas. Andy? I went with Webster. Wow. Would it have made a difference if I'd said Ben Cartwright? A tremendous oh, difference. Oh, yeah. The correct that, answer was Bonanza. That changes everything. Unreal. I, I'd be uncomfortable showing you where I pulled that answer. I, 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 <laughs> wow. <laughs> so if it, if, it, if it helps, Will Gear was the gentleman who played Grandpa on the Waltons. Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. So that kind of helps you know it was... A little no, bit older TV really. show. <laughs> Andy. I just knew it wasn't. Andy's <laughs> struggling. To... 
The lifeboats are leaving the Titanic, and there's no room for me. <laughs> You're all going to get this one. This is easy. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Question four. Following his confrontation with Lucifer, a wounded Castile makes his way back to the Winchesters <laughs> and informs them of everything that has happened, including Lucifer's return. Locked in. Locked in. If she didn't love me now, she'll love me after this. I'm also locked in. Kels, let's make love bloom. Yeah. What did you get? I went with supernatural. Andy? Supernatural to the sound of Kansas. The best version of that song. The best song. version, the edited version of that song so actually good. is a pretty good song. Oh, so good. Uh, supernatural for me. Okay, the correct answer is supernatural. So Kelvin's hiatus obviously has improved his trivia, his trivia wherewithal, which was already pretty good. He is at 136. Devo with 118 and Andy in the room with 60. <laughs> Solid 60. Hey, if you keep adding 10, man, you, you could make it to 70. Yeah, I could. <laughs> so far, we've covered movies, music, history, sports, TV. So you know what's coming next. Science. Science. Oh, <laughs> she blinded me. Save the best for last. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the sheer preponderance of liberal arts degrees in this room makes this category yeah. very difficult. <laughs> Question one in science. The element with atomic number 13 is the most common metal in the Earth's crust. What is it? Mm. I'll accept either the American or British pronunciations. Locked in. I am locked in. Do we get a bonus point if we know both pronunciations? No. Rats. I could really use the bonus points over here. <laughs> okay, you can get one. Are you, are you saying you're not too good for pity points? I am not too good for pity points. I have no pride at this point. So glad I told my students to listen in. I'm going to hate myself. Um. The other this two isn't guys, daunting at all. The other two, they, they are locked yeah, in pretty quick. They're locked fast. Um, uh, locked in, I guess. Maybe Kelvin hasn't heard the British pronunciation. No. Andy, why don't you share us? Share I have to admit, that's how I got it, because I was going to put down iron. Right. And you said the, the two different pronunciations, so it's aluminum or aluminium. Okay. Devo? Aluminium. Andy, or I mean Kels. I actually went with aluminum. Nice. Are you nice. kidding me right now? I'm dead serious. I would have thought iron was more common in the Earth's crust for some reason. How do you think we get all that foil? Oh, yeah. It's got to come from somewhere, Andy. Yeah, good Seriously. point. Yeah, now I think about it. It's very scientific. It's very scientific. I got this because I used to watch Monty Python. I was trying to figure out what aluminium was when I was like 13. <laughs> what are they talking about? <laughs> Truly. Question two in science. Until 2013, this planet only had 13 known moons. They found some in 2013. Locked in? Locked in. Well, I'll, I'll make up for it with, with this one, for getting that last one right, because this one is wrong. But I'm locked in. Andy? Uranus? I beg your pardon? <laughs> Devo? Or Uranus, if you want to go that way. <laughs> Devo? Jupiter? Kels? I went with Saturn. For the moons, the planets, the inner moons, or the inner planets have very few moons, mm -hmm. right? Mars has... Two or three, I think. Two. We've only two. got the one. Then you got the big la the big gas giants. Jupiter is up to ninety some moons, I think now. Saturn has dozens. Oh, well, um, that was it. So that pretty much just leaves you with two moon two planets left, right? So this should have been a fifty fifty between Uranus and Neptune, except Uranus is another uh, gas giant. So it's got lots. So the correct answer is Neptune. Oh. <laughs> I was really rooting for you, Andy. 
I was so close. You were, you were close. much closer than we were. And believe yes. it or not, I was using some of that logic. I knew it was one of the, the farther out planets of the solar system. The farther out? I actually forgot about <laughs> Neptune. I was like, I thought it was 50 between Uranus and Pluto, and then I remembered that Pluto is not really a planet, depending on what day it is. And so that's why I went with the answer I did. <laughs> Question three. 13 is a Fibonacci number. What is the next highest number in the Fibonacci sequence? I wish there was a, a video of David's face when you, when you did that. I have never seen. I can't see him from where I'm sitting. Freeze on the mic of. What is uh, what is the scale again? We're using. <laughs> Well, I mean, technically, it's not a scale; it's a sequence. Uh, no, it's a okay, sequence. the uh, sequence, but it's the Fibonacci sequence. Oh, the it's, Fibonacci! It sequence. shows up in nature in yeah, a lot of different places. Okay, like the the it, like the Fibonacci spiral. Yeah, the, yeah. It, it represents a spiral. Oh, yeah. stop it! Is it uh, more than two parsecs? <laughs> <laughs> I locked in a number um, that I think will make sense. I, I'll, I, I don't know at all what I locked in with the number. I'm doing math. Hold on. <laughs> I don't think there's math to do. I think this is just something you know. It, it, it either is or isn't. I'm locked in. You know he's got Bugs Bunny on that picture sure. again. <laughs> or three doors down or something like that. Davo? I went 21. Oh, that's such a better number than one. Kells? I went with 25. Andy? Went with 169. Okay. <laughs> so let, let's let's work backwards. I want to hear the logic behind your numbers. I just multiplied 13 times 13. Okay. I I just wrote 25 down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dave? If I was I I could was trying to picture I was actually trying to picture the Fibonacci sequence in my head. Which is why I looked like I had just had a stroke because I was accessing <laughs> a part of the brain that doesn't usually get dealt with. Cobweb and a creaking if, wheel. And if I remember correctly, which I probably don't, it's the two numbers in the sequence, previous two numbers are added together to get to, to, get to the next one. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I thought the f- it went to 8. So I thought it was 8 to 13 to 21. So... I was mainly just trying to picture something I'd seen in my head. Is it 169? Uh, false. No. <laughs> the correct answer is... So, the Fibonacci <laughs> sequence is adding two previous numbers to get the next number. So, you start with one and one, mm-hmm. make two. Two and one, make three. Three and two, make five. Five and three, make eight. Eight and five, 13. 13 and eight. 21. Uh, yeah. Wow. I give you a little bit of yeah. that one. Uh, that was well played. I knew it was in the 20s. But Not in the 160s? Yeah, I was okay. pretty. I pretty much ruled that one out. My second guess would have been 11 because it's louder. <laughs> it's the loudest. <laughs> this goes to 11. <laughs> Question four in science and the last of our regular, regular questions. Oh, I'm going to miss this one. I know. <laughs> This 13-episode science documentary aired in 1980 on PBS. For five points each, name the documentary and the scientist who presented the show. Locked in. It has a full name, but I'll take the commonly, the, the common name that people know it by. But I give you a bonus if you know the actual official name of it, which basically the subtitle of it. I'm locked in with an answer of sorts. Dave, are you locked in? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dave. I'm with Cosmos okay. and Carl Sagan. Kels? Also went with Cosmos and Carl Sagan. Andy? Cosmos, Carl Sagan. I'm intrigued by the subtitle, though. The official title was Cosmos, A Personal Voyage. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I have to say... I watched the one or two episodes of the recent remake with Neil deGrasse Tyson, mm-hmm. and I couldn't make it past episode one or two, but I can still watch the original. I just There's something about Neil deGrasse Tyson that 
he just, I don't know. He just kind of wrote me the wrong way for some reason. I'm in the same boat. I even tried to listen to his podcast for a while and just couldn't get into it. But I I saw all the, the original series probably two or three times. I, 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 I think I'm, I can pinpoint why um, he's somewhat condescending. I think that's, I think mm. that's it. Um, and he is kind of trollish in the way he dispenses his knowledge. Yeah, I can see that. And he has an utter disdain for philosophy of any kind. Oh. Well, I have some final scores. Oh, good. Why don't you share them with us, Dave? <laughs> Am I winning? Uh, no. Oh. Um, Andy, you'll be happy to know that you are still in the room. Kells has 156. Davo has 138. And Andy has 80. So you're saying he has a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Never tell me the odds, Devo. <laughs> uh, all right. So that gives you the information you need to make your wager for our final question, which today is U.S. states. All right, I got my wager. It's not very often I'm in the lead coming in. There's a lot of pressure. There's no pressure if you're in last place. I got none to lose. That was a... Uh... Richard Pryor doing a Leon Spinks impression. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't got no money. I ain't it? got no Tifas. <laughs> <laughs> what was the last one? I ain't got, I ain't got a driver's license. <laughs> Freaky dinky. <laughs> By the way, one of the funniest stand-ups like ever. Like, yeah, I got, yeah, 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 yeah. I got that album concert. when I was like oh, 11 years old, that. and my yeah. mom let me watch it. My mom let me listen to it. She had no idea what was on there. Comedy gold was on there. Did you? You got? I am locked in with a wager. <sighs> locked in with a wager. Okay, everybody has their wagers locked in. So here's what I need you to do. Mm. Name for me the first 13 U.S. states. If you get at least 10 of them right, you earn your points. I'll give you a hint. They're all along the east coast of the United States. Well, I better cross out Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> that takes Hawaii out of the top 10. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Okay, I'm going to go through the states in the order that they were admitted. Well, or uh, I guess they weren't really admitted. Ratified or... The Constitution. Yeah. Well, actually, the yeah. Articles of Confederation came before the yeah. Constitution. But anyway. I know that part. <laughs> no, this isn't, this, is, this isn't the order that they ratified the Constitution. It's the order they became states. But it doesn't really matter, so I'm just going to read them. <laughs> Delaware. <laughs> That's the one I missed. That's what I was trying to come up with. Uh, do you want us to tell Yeah, just as, shout as out as if you got them. Okay. Dude. Uh, yes, yes, Delaware. No. Delaware. No. Yeah, I wrote that first. Did okay. not get Delaware. That was the one I was stumped. I was, Are you serious? I'm serious. It's <laughs> what I can come up with. It's on their license plate. The I... <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't thinking license plate. <laughs> Pennsylvania. Got it. Got it. Got it. New Jersey. Got it. Got it. Got it. Georgia. Got it. Got it. Got it. Connecticut. Got it. Got it. Massachusetts. Got it. Got it. Maryland. Got, got it. it. Oh. <laughs> don't got it? <laughs> I don't got it. I don't believe I did that. Okay. You're you're starting to scare me a little bit. Yeah, maybe. I know. <laughs> You bad don't have much day. wiggle room left. a bad day. Uh, we did Maryland, South Carolina. Got it. Got it. New, huh? Kells missed South Carolina. Missed South Carolina. New Hampshire. Got, Got it. it. Virginia. Got, Got it. it. New York. Got, Got it. it. North Carolina. Got, Got it. it. And Rhode Island. Got, Got it. it. Got it. Sounds like, Dave, were you perfect? I'm 12 of 13. I put Vermont instead of Rhode Island. Ah. I have 11 of 13. Okay. Andy, you missed two? Yeah, I missed two, Vermont. so I have 10 out of 13. On Vermont and Maine. 
So yeah, Maine. Maine. I knew Maine came in with the Missouri Compromise, so I knew it wasn't Maine. But I was uh, just totally. I Maryland. I can't. Delaware. I forgive myself for, but Maryland is unforgivable. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot Maryland. Vermont was a is a part of the Maine territory for a while, right? Right. Maine was carved out of Vermont to come up with another state to even things out. Okay, so it's going to come down to to the wagers. Andy, how much did you bet? I put it all on the table. All right, doubling his score. Devo? I'm afraid I got a little cute. I, uh, I'd i only bet 30, thinking that Kelvin might not bet. <laughs> Anticipating we would get So I bet 30, so I have 168. So how much did Kels need to bet to, to win the game? Uh, he needed to bet 12. Actually, to win, he needed to bet 13. Ah. Uh-huh. And it's, <laughs> it's the 13th episode, wow. and I think it was 13. So tell me, Kells, please, did you bet 13 points? I bet 93. Oh, well, that's enough. <laughs> I thought he was, well, I did my math wrong. I thought he was going to go for like a huge number. I was trying to, yeah, but 93 was safe enough, I guess. It's quite safe. <laughs> <laughs> Final scores. Andy, you made a game of it, 160. Uh, Devo with 168 and Kelvin Kells, our man, back from his hiatus with 249. Nice. Somebody's been doing some book learning. <laughs> Can I carry some of these points over for the next game? <laughs> I'm not doing the next game, so you'll have to. You're gonna need him. Talk to. Him. <laughs> wow. I was worried my questions were too hard. Not so much anymore. <laughs> This was a relatively high scoring game. Yeah. I this thought. was a good game, guys. <laughs> Appreciate you editing out the part where I cried. <laughs> well, we do care about you. Yeah, we do. I appreciate that. So thank you guys for playing a wonderful game. Um, I'd like to offer a few shout outs to our listeners. I'd like to give a quick shout out to Liz, one of our earliest listeners, and a shout out to Lexi, our our number one fan. Do you, do you guys have any shout outs you'd like to give out? Shout out to Bentonville West High School. I'm better at history than this podcast alludes to. <laughs> Kels, do you have anybody you'd like to offer a shout out to? Oh man. Um. Uh, well, first of all, the the fans, the the double L's today. Yeah. Lexi and Liz, much appreciation. Everybody listening out there, we appreciate you. Neil, any shout outs? I just want to appreciate everybody who listens, and tell your friends because we need more listeners. And leave a and leave a leave a, a rating for us on uh, on the iTunes or anywhere really. We're on yeah. iTunes. We're on Google Play. We're also on Spotify. Worldwide, baby. Worldwide. <laughs> you can also find us on Twitter at Ladle Brain. <laughs> Why is that again? Why is that not because Brain Ladle? Because I put the name in incorrectly when I started the account. Huh. Is, is that ever going to get old? Then never. Apparently. <laughs> huh. uh, you can find us on uh, Facebook at Brain Ladle Productions. You can email us directly if you want to give uh, topics for us to research and ask questions about. Oh. Um, thank I'd, you, I'd Andy. Love for, I'd love for people to write in with some uh, challenging kind of uh, themes for us to write about. That would be very, very cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you, Andy, for coming and playing again. Thanks for having me. Uh, this has been Davo and Kels. See y'all later. And Neil. It's been a pleasure. Signing off. (laughs) The preceding podcast was presented by Brain Ladle Productions. All rights reserved.